Hi there and welcome to another King's Daily. My name's Toby, one of the leaders at King's Community Church and, um, and uh, if you're here for the first time and you uh, may be new to the Bible or new to the church or new to Christianity or whatever, we hope these times are helpful to you um, as well as those who are sort of dialing in every day part of the church. Um, we're, we're working our way through this week um, following the final week of Jesus' life and the Gospels give a huge amount um, of space over to this week, um, highlighting the importance not just of Jesus' teaching in his life but also ultimately his death and his, his resurrection. And we're picking some of the story up in chapter 22 in Luke's Gospel and just set the scene a little bit. Jesus has been with his disciples and um, they're celebrating what's called the Passover, looking back to when God brought his people, the Israelites, out from under slavery and oppression from Pharaoh in Egypt and brings them into a place of freedom. And uh, the bread and wine that they're, they're taking there, Jesus is infusing um, uh, the meaning of these things from the Old Testament into uh, a greater meaning in himself, that these things ultimately find their fulfillment not in what took place then, but in himself, in his life and death and resurrection. And uh, then after the meal, the disciples have a bit of an argument about who is the greatest among them, and uh, they don't show a shed load of humility. And then uh, Jesus speaks to, to Simon, to Peter, and, um, and says this to him in chapter 22, verse 31. He's speaking to all the disciples, but he's focusing in on Peter. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. You're going to go through some difficult times. You're going to go through some trials. It's not going to be easy. But I've prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, because you're going to turn away, strengthen your brothers. Now, Peter doesn't respond by saying, thanks, Jesus. Thanks for the heads up. Thanks for praying for me. Uh, you know, I, I know I can fall and fail and get it wrong and so on. He doesn't respond with that kind of humility. He says in verse 33, he replied, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. Now, yet yeah, there could be sort of arrogance in there. There could be pride and a bit of self-assurance and self-confidence in there. But I also wonder if that's just mixed in with Peter's desire to follow Jesus because he loves him. He, he knows who he is and he's, he wants to give his everything to follow Jesus. And, and, he, and he doesn't want to get it wrong. He wants to follow Jesus, even being willing to give up his own life for Jesus. But in verse 34, Jesus says this, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows today, you will deny three times that you even know me. And if you know the story goes on when Jesus is arrested and um, he's taken to the house of the high priest and Peter follows behind with a crowd of people and they're sort of gathered in the courtyard around a fire and a servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight and she looked closely at him and said, this man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I don't know you, he said. Then a little later, someone else saw him and said, you're also one of them. Man, I am not, said Peter. About an hour later, another asserted, certainly this fellow was with him, for he's a Galilean. And Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Three times denied Jesus. Just as he was speaking, the cock crowed. Verse 61, the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. And then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the cock crows today, you will disown me three times. And Peter went outside and he wept bitterly. The words of Jesus came true. <laughs> Peter didn't. He didn't follow Jesus to his death. He didn't follow through on his words. He suddenly realizes, yeah, I, I, I got it wrong. Um, I failed Jesus. I failed the one I wanted to follow. I haven't followed through. Jesus looks at him and, and I imagine that look wasn't a, a told you so, Peter. You should have listened to me. Now, will you please buck your ideas up? I wonder if it was just a look of compassion and love and care for Peter. Uh, um, a look that communicated God's heart for us when we get it wrong. He knows the worst about us. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our failures. He knows our struggles internally. And he looks at us and he loves us and he has compassion for us. And thankfully the story doesn't stop there with Peter kind of weeping outside. It goes on after Jesus' resurrection and there's a beautiful moment in when um, 
an angel speaks to the two Marys who go to the tomb of Jesus and find it empty. And they say to the Marys, go to the disciples and to Peter. Go and tell them that Jesus is risen. I just love that touch there. And Peter. God, God, God loves the individual. He loves you. He loves me personally. And uh, he has that wonderful care and compassion towards each one of us and towards Peter that he had that. And then in chapter 21 in John's Gospel, the story goes on that they're out fishing one day, the disciples, and they see they don't catch anything. And someone from the shore shouts to them and says, um, put your nets down the other side. And they haul up a load of fish. And John and Peter, they recognize it as, as Jesus who's telling them to do this. And Peter can't even wait for the boat to get to shore. He jumps in the water. He runs towards Jesus. They have a bit of barbecued fish on the beach. And then afterwards, there's this wonderful scene where Jesus reinstates Peter back and, and says, um, even though he failed, this is, his, this is Peter's sort of turning back to Jesus. He says, do you love me, Peter? And Peter says, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And it says, Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? I wonder if that just mirrors these three denials of, of Peter earlier on. And it kind of brings the memory back. But here's Jesus standing in front of him. He knows Peter's heart. He knows he loves him. And he said, I've got a purpose for you. Even though you failed, I want to put you back on your feet. I want you to go again. I want you to follow me. That's what the grace of God does in our lives. That we don't get it right all the time. We don't follow through on our words all the time. We, don't, we fail sometimes. And this beautiful story here in Easter week is that the grace of God comes to us a time and time again in the person of Christ. He forgives us our sin. He sets us back on our feet. He puts us back and says, I've not finished with you yet, Peter. And it's when we experience the grace of God like this, it changes us from the inside out. It changes, I imagine it changed Peter's um, leadership, the way he was become a, a key leader in the church. And, and, and this would have shaped the way that he would have responded to people when maybe people failed him or maybe they got it wrong. Or in his communication of the gospel of Christ, of all that Jesus has done, this grace of God would have shaped him, would have empowered him, would have enabled him to then follow Jesus more fully. And that's what's open to us today. The Bible says in Hebrews that we approach the throne of grace with confidence to receive mercy and find help in our time of need. Whatever we're facing today, maybe you failed, maybe you feel, I, I just don't know, run to Jesus, do what Peter did. And you experience the love and the care and the compassion of God and the grace of God in our lives that enables us then to follow him more fully. I hope it's been helpful. I'd like to just pray for us before we go. Lord, thank you so much that the scene didn't end with Peter's failure. And Lord, that our story doesn't have to end with our failures and our, our, our weaknesses and, and, and getting it wrong. Lord, thank you so much that you wonderfully come to us time and time again with incredible grace that changes us, that sets us on track, that enables us to live the kind of life that you call us to. And I pray for each person listening to this that they would know the amazing grace of God just as Peter experienced it in their lives, that we would know it more deeply, more fully than ever before, and maybe even for the first time today. Amen. Thanks for listening. Cheers.